This is one of the biggest smartphone boxes I've ever received. It's also one of the most generous gift sets ever. But what's inside? Hello and welcome back to Marcos Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have and if you haven't subscribed the button is just down there. So this is the Find X5 Pro 5G. It's Oppo's latest flagship smartphone and if you order it before the 23rd of March you get this massive box of goodies. They're worth nearly £400, I think they're really nicely considered, but is this phone any good? And more importantly, is it better than the Galaxy S22 Ultra? Very quick run through of what you get in that box. So along with the phone, you get the Oppo Enco X earbuds, which are worth £169. You get the Oppo Watch Free, which is worth £89. You get a 50 watt wireless charger, that's worth £75. And then finally, you get a Kevlar Aramid protective case, which is worth £40. This is the Oppo Watch 3. I've been wearing this for a couple of days now, and it's just a very simple health band slash fitness tracker, but it's actually quite nice. It's got heart rate monitoring, fitness monitoring, sleep tracking, which is what I'm really enjoying using actually, but it's also got a 14 day battery life. And that's despite having a fairly high resolution screen and it's pretty quick for what it needs to do. I like this, I need to spend more time with it. Uh, I don't know if it's an Apple Watch beta, but yeah, a nice little thing to throw in. Next up is the Enco X earbuds, which are worth £169. And yeah, they look very similar to Apple's AirPods Pro. They're co-created with Dynaudio, so there's lots of kind of heritage there in terms of the sound quality. And they do sound really good, actually. Uh, they fit my ears nicely, 25 hours of battery life, really nice slim case. I love the case on these, it's great. They sound really good, actually. I'm quite impressed with these. And it's USB-C. Next up is the £75 50 watt wireless charger. It's a wireless charger, you can't get that excited about it, but it is very nicely built and yeah, it's on my bedside table right now. It's, uh, it's just a nice stand. And lastly, the Kevlar Aramid protective case. It's just a phone case, but it's nicely made. It's got the Oppo branding on it. It's nice and thin, very light, feels quite tough as well, which is the Kevlar thing, I suppose. And it looks nice on the phone. So, and you will need it on this phone, which I'll come on to in a moment. Right, onto the specs and pricing for this Oppo Find. I wish they had a better name than this, the Find X5 Pro. I think I'll just call it the X5 from here because it's just easier. So this is £1,049 in the UK. It comes in two different colours, which is glaze black and ceramic white. This is the glaze black version, and it is one of the prettiest phones I've ever seen. Inside, there is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, 12 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It's also IP68 water resistant and dust resistant. And the pricing for the X5 does put it firmly in this kind of iPhone 13 Pro Max slash Galaxy S22 Ultra bracket. So it is definitely a flagship phone in that respect. Now, when it comes to the design, as I mentioned a moment ago, it is, I think, the prettiest smartphone I've ever seen. And most of that is because of this ceramic back. So it's got this very, very shiny, ceramic back, which kind of melds into where the camera lenses are. So you don't get a camera, well you get a camera bump, but you don't get the traditional camera bump that you might get on, for example, the S22 Ultra or the iPhone where there's a, a ridge. This very neatly and very kind of gracefully just melds around it. And it's not gonna be to everyone's taste, I don't think, but I really like it. It looks futuristic. It looks like smartphones should be designed in this way. And that ceramic back, it's just so shiny. When you first get it out of the box, it does take your breath away a little bit. Now there are some issues with that, two principally. The first one is that it is the slippiest phone I've ever used. You can put this, I'm not joking, on a pretty much flat surface and it moves. In fact, it's a great tool for working out if your surface is level. I now know, for example, that the breakfast bar in our kitchen ain't level. The second issue is, of course, fingerprints and smudges. This thing picks them up like nobody's business. You can clean it pretty easily, to be fair. You can actually clean it with your hand to a degree, weirdly, but it does get very smudgy. That is the problem with tech like this. As beautiful as it looks in product shots and when you first get it out of the packaging and when you give it a good polish, when you start using it, it just looks a bit grubby, which is a shame because Oppo have clearly spent a lot of time and effort on the design of this thing. They clearly care about it. Built like a tank as well. If you do the flex test, there's literally no flex there whatsoever. And it has Corning Gorilla Glass on the front, which is nice. So although you're probably gonna put this straight in a case. I mean, why would you ever want to damage that back? Although Oppo does say that this is apparently pretty scratch resistant, even so, people are going to put this in a case. But despite that, it is the prettiest, most ergonomic and pleasing to hold smartphone I think I've ever held. 
The screen on this X5 Pro is absolutely stunning. It's a 6.7 inch AMOLED. You can set it to 1080p or 1440p resolutions. It's also got the dynamic 120 hertz refresh rate that we're becoming very used to with these flagship smartphones like the iPhone 13 Pro and the S22 series. That makes it feel very, very fluid, but also it conserves battery life because it ramps down that refresh rate right down to one hertz. If you're not doing much on the screen, then when you start scrolling, it ramps it back up to 120 hertz. I love high refresh rate screens now. I'm a complete convert. It also supports 10-bit color, HDR10 plus video. It's got 800 nits of brightness. I think the peak is 1300 nits, so it's a very bright screen. It also has something called Nature Tone Display, which is very similar to Apple's True Tone, which basically corrects the white balance based on the ambient room light and makes the whites look white. Nice to have that on here. The S22 Ultra doesn't really have it. I know you can set the vivid and natural, neutral, whatever it's called, color settings, but it doesn't quite work like True Tone. This does. It also has tiny, tiny bezels. The screen wraps around slightly on the left and right hand sides, which gives you this lovely expansive display. But it does have one drawback, which is if you're holding the phone like this, occasionally your finger will touch the screen and do something on the screen. I've had that a few times, which can be a bit frustrating. But all in all, it's a lovely smartphone screen. When it comes to biometric security, just like the S22 Ultra, you get both facial recognition and a beneath the screen fingerprint sensor. They both work brilliantly, but I do find myself for some reason using the touch, not touch ID, using the fingerprint sensor more often than I thought I would. And that feels like a bit of a relic for Apple people like me. But actually, the more you use it, the more enjoyable it is. And it's a complete aesthetic thing, but I love the animation that this phone gives you when you put your finger on the screen. It kind of lights up and there's this little ring thing that goes around. I just really like the fingerprint sensor on this. When it comes to performance, this is one of the first phones to feature that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip. Now, as a bit of context, I have the S22 Ultra here, but mine is the Exynos version. So in the UK, we're not lucky enough to get the Snapdragon version of the S22 Ultra. We have to make do with, with basically Samsung's own chip, which is the Exynos. I've said this in my review, which I'll leave a link to above. It still feels like a snappy phone, this, but there's no doubting the fact that the Oppo feels a little bit quicker. There's definitely a bit of lag on this. Occasionally, I mentioned this in the review, that occasionally if you're opening apps or coming out of apps, it judders a little bit. The best way to describe it, if you've used an iPhone, this feels like an iPhone in terms of how fluid and quick it is. And as for the version of Android, it is called Color OS. That is Oppo's own take on Android. And I really like it. It's not particularly different to stock Android. It looks a bit different here and there, but they haven't done too much to it. They've been quite respectful, which is a good thing, trust me. Um, they do put their own stuff on there. They put their own apps and things on there. You can just delete them and put the stuff on that you want. But it was a very simple setup process, and I took to this version of Android just as quickly as I did with the S22 Ultra. One of the first things I noticed when I got this out of the box and looked at the back of it was the name Hasselblad, which is a very famous high-end camera manufacturer. So to cover that off straight away, this phone doesn't include any kind of Hasselblad hardware. It's purely a software thing, which I'll come on to in a moment. But in terms of lenses, you get three on the X5 Pro. You get a 50 megapixel f1.7 regular zoom lens, a 50 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, and a 13 megapixel f2.4 telephoto. You also get something called Mari Silicon, which is Oppo's image processor, which sits alongside the Snapdragon and does all of the clever stuff for your photos. It's not bad. It takes some fairly decent photos. I'll put some on the screen now for you. They're nice and sharp. I think the white balance is spot on. Macro mode is really good. Night mode is fantastic. This shot of my car, this was a very dark scene and quite tricky because there's a bit of contrast going on there on the left and right hand sides of the body of the car, as you can see, but it handled it fantastically. I'm really, really impressed with that photo. The telephoto is a little bit noisy and a little bit soft as you can see in this photo of my beer from last night and as you can see on my Lego Defender there's a bit of an issue with dynamic range at times so it's not a bad camera it's just okay really but what I do like about this phone is the influence of Hasselblad and that doesn't mean you're getting Hasselblad lenses or gear inside the phone. You're just getting basically three filters and a pro mode. And the three filters have been developed with three different Hasselblad photographers. The first one is called Radiance. The second one is Serenity, and then thirdly you've got Emerald. 
And I think they all look quite nice. They're just quite nice to play around with. The other thing you get with this Hasselblad thing is a pro mode, which basically turns the camera into a DSLR. So you can change everything from the shutter speed to the aperture, white balance, all that stuff. You just get manual access to all of those features. As for video, this thing shoots up to 4K, which is fine. You don't need 8K. And it's not bad, to be honest. You get nice dynamic range. It's perfectly usable 4K footage. It's not as impressive as the iPhone. I think the iPhone is still the king when it comes to video, but you'll get some decent footage out of this phone. So it's an impressive camera, but just remember that you're not getting a pocket Hasselblad. Right, battery life. Um, it's really good, <laughs> really good. So I charged this yesterday. This was the last time it was charged. Yesterday it came off the charger, I think at about 6 a.m. Obviously had 100% of that time. And if I go into the battery now, so now it is eight o'clock the next day. It's got 42% remaining. That means time since last charged, one day, two hours and 38 minutes. And according to the battery app on here, it could last for another 13 hours and 25 minutes. And also, Oppo, thank you very much for including a charger in the box. I'm all for reducing waste and all that sort of stuff, but it was quite refreshing to open the box and find a charger in there. And it's not any old charger, it's actually an 80 watt charger, which gives this the fast charging capability. Since I've been using the S22 Ultra and also the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I've got used to two day battery life for phones. And it's a bit of a revelation. I still love my iPhone 13 mini, but that won't get you through two days at all. This is actually, I do think, it might be down to that Snapdragon, I do think that the X5 Pro is a better performer battery-wise than the S22 Ultra, and it is absolutely on a par with the king of battery, which is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. In terms of competition, there are two competitors to look at for this phone. The first one is the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is a superb phone. It's the exact same price as this, £1,049. They both feature the same build quality. They've both got high refresh rate screens. So it just comes down to whether or not you prefer iOS or Android. It's a really simple choice in that respect. If you prefer iOS, get the iPhone. I think the far more interesting comparison is between the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the X5 Pro. The S22 Ultra is more expensive. It's 100 pounds more expensive in the UK. You do get some freebies, not quite as many as this, but you do get, at the moment anyway, uh, 12 months of Disney Plus, and you also get free Galaxy Buds Pro. Samsung also does a very good trading program. So if you've got an old, for example, S, whatever, S10, yeah, they'll give you quite a lot of money for it. But it is tricky choosing between these two. Having said that, the winner for me personally is the S22 Ultra. The reason for that, it has a better camera than this by quite a distance, actually. I do prefer the width of the screen on this. It feels like a more substantial device in that respect. And for some people, the S Pen will be a differentiator. It isn't quite that for me yet, but it's early days. And the reason I do prefer this over this is because it's got it. And it's just something else to play around with and see if I can fit into my daily life. But it is incredibly close. And in the UK, at least, this is a quicker phone than this because of the Snapdragon versus Exynos thing. But if you are a Note person, then obviously the S22 Ultra is the phone to go for. The Oppo Find X5 Pro 5G, I wish it had a better name, is easily the best looking phone in this studio. I'm really enjoying using it. It's such a good performer. It just feels iPhone-like in terms of its fluidity and speed and all that sort of stuff. And the camera, it's okay, it gets you by. I do like those Hasselblad filters, I think they make a big difference. The battery life is just stunning. And obviously, if you order before March the 23rd, you get all this stuff for free, which is incredibly generous. But if you strip all of those freebies back, it is still £1,049, which does make it a flagship smartphone. The good news is it completely lives up to that hype. This really is a very, very good phone. If you are an Oppo fan, or if you're just looking for a premium Android experience, I don't think you can go wrong with this. Now, if you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to a video where I compare the Galaxy S22 Ultra against the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Trust me, you don't want to miss that one. But until next time, thank you as always for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.